Yo, what is going on guys? Today we got another tutorial. So today I'm bringing you guys five music video effects. Um, so a lot of the tutorials on my channel are aimed towards more of the intermediate to advanced people. But I want to give you guys a tutorial showing you guys some basic effects that I think haven't been really talked about that much on YouTube, but I still think are very useful. So this is aimed at people who are first started editing, such as music videos or whatever kind of editing you're doing, as well as people who are advanced, but maybe do not know some of these effects. Even if you've been doing this a while and you can pull off some of the crazy stuff, um, I definitely recommend that you watch this video and you learn this. Maybe you picked up something new or maybe you'll just see the way I do something and it can benefit you but anyways let's get started I'm gonna show you guys exactly what to do so here I have four clips on my timeline just raw clips no effects added onto them we're gonna start on this very first one and the first effect that I'm gonna show you guys is the change color effect so not a lot of people talk about this usually they talk about just changing or keyframing the hue of the entire scene but why I like the change color effect is because you can actually cycle through the hue of things maybe in the background um, and keep the people performing normal so the way to do this it's actually very simple just come down here to the bottom left and click on your effects tab if you don't see that you might have to click on this little arrow and then click effects once you're in here just look up the word change in this little search bar and then under the color correction folder it says right here change color um, there's also a change to color I have a whole video talking about how to use that one it's more used for like changing colors of trees and stuff but if you're more interested in that go down in the description below I have a lot of relevant tutorials that'll teach you other stuff such as how to use that change of color but anyways Let's use change color, we'll drag that onto our clip. So once you've put that on your clip, just come up here to your effect controls and you're gonna see that it pops up right here. So now we're gonna go down and we're gonna see all the options. So the only option you have to worry about right now is this right here, the change to color, um, and you'll see this little eyedropper. Just go ahead and click on that and then just select the thing that you'd like to change. So for me, I'm gonna want the background to change, but I want them to stay the same and not be all colorful and skin changing. So I'm gonna click on this color in the background, um, this light white color. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come up here and then the very and then the very first option, it's hue transformation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very beginning of my clip and then I'm going to come and I'm going to click this little animation stopwatch right next to hue transformation. So what that's doing is it's creating a keyframe. So this keyframe means that if I drag along here and I change um, the value of this, you're seeing that this is being made and what this is is this is actually an animation. So as I drag along, you're seeing that it's changing and then if I drag along more, and I go like this, it's gonna change even more on my screen. So now because we made this keyframe, uh, I'm gonna drag along and just show you guys exactly what we're really doing. So if I go like this, you're seeing that as I drag along, these colors in the background are changing hue and they're cycling through all these different colors. But obviously this looks a little bit choppy, it kinda looks like there's some distortion, it looks like it's not very accurate, it's not really the look that we're trying to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag down here in effect controls. I'm going to find these two options right here. The first one is called matching tolerance and the second one is called matching softness. So these are the, so these are the two settings that we're going to use to be able to blend this better and make a better look. So let's just go to a point where it looks like this is kind of choppy and let's just open these two sliders up. And I'm just going to move them around and try and find the place um, where it's a perfect medium. So obviously if I drag this all the way up it's going to change the whole color which we don't want. I'm going to try and drag it back so that the background is green, but the person in focus is not green. So right about here, and obviously if it bleeds over a tiny bit, it's not that big of a deal. And then we're going to come over to the matching softness, and we're going to do the same exact thing. So now it looks like there's more of a light in the background, and it looks like there's a little light reflecting on him, but it's not completely changing his skin color, it's not completely messing him up, and I think it's a lot better change color effect, as you see right here. Um, it looks like there's really just changing of lights, um, and it's a really cool in Premiere effect that you can do. So that's the very first one. So next I'm going to show you another really cool effect which you can use in two different ways, actually. So this is actually the Ultra Key effect. So a lot of beginners I see using the Ultra Key effect to just kind of key out any color in the back. You kind of just key out any color in the background, they'll drag it down here, they'll use the color corrector, they'll take this out, and then they'll try and mess around. And sometimes, as you see, it can get really sloppy, really distorted. So what you have to do is actually do the same thing with these cleanup things, soften it up, and try and make it like it's blended better. But I'm actually going to show you guys how to use the Ultra Key for a different thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in that diamond that you saw in the very first clip by opening up my green screen elements pack. Literally just dropped today, so if you guys are coming from that video and you downloaded it, you should have this in your uh, you should have this in your folder. It's called Diamond Green Screen Video. Take that, drag that into your bin. If you guys haven't seen that video though, it will be in the description below. Definitely go check that one out. Very useful. So now take this diamond green screen and just place this in a video layer above your original footage. So V2, we're going to put it above uh, my footage which is in V1. And now you're going to see you have this green screen clip of a diamond with this green. So now we're going to go back and we're going to look up that ultra key effect again. 
and this time we're going to use it to get rid of that green color so we're going to click the eyedropper and then click this green color and now you see we have a nice diamond which we can use so, so this is kind of like a cheap and really easy way to get 3d elements into your videos um, without actually having them to without actually having to design them yourself so this is all royalty free so it's actually very useful to use so now what we're going to do is just another effect. This doesn't count towards the ones that I'm teaching you, but it's very useful to use. If you just right click on your clip and you go down to speed duration, you can just change this to let's say 1000%. Click OK and now we have a faster spinning diamond um, and it's a shorter clip like that. So that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to show you one more little mini tip and that just makes this better. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go up to the effect controls right here. So if you learn how to master the motion and the opacity tabs, you can create some really cool effects without having to do anything complicated. For example, if you know how to keyframe, you know how to change scale, position, you, uh, that is a huge part of learning video editing as well as learning how to keyframe and using and changing around blending modes and opacity. So what I'm talking about, it might seem very complicated if you guys are first starting out, but I'm just going to show you guys a little example. So what I'm going to do is click on this clip of the diamond and what I want is I want it to start very small and then become bigger so to do that I'm gonna do the same thing I showed you for that change to color I'm gonna use keyframes I'm gonna go up to my effect controls right here and then I'm gonna click on motion and then here for scale I'm gonna make this uh, I'm gonna click this little drop down arrow and just make this very small like about right there and then what I'm gonna do is just click this little toggle animation button so now you'll see that I'm at the very beginning of my clip, which is where I want to be. This is my starting position. And I want to choose an ending position where I want it to be big. So I'm going to take this and drag to the end of this clip. And, I, and at this point of the clip, I want it to be big. So I'm going to go back up here to scale and just, <clears throat> and just drag it up like that. And you see whenever I drag it up, it's changing the animation. This is just a visual of the keyframes that you're creating. Um, so like this. So now as you see, if I go along, you're seeing that it's starting small, it's spinning, and it's going, and it's getting bigger. Um, so that's just a very simple keyframe. So if you guys can learn the basics of that and apply it to other effects, it is very, very important. Okay, so for my third effect, I'm going to show you another thing you can do using these built-in options under your effect controls that come with every clip. And this time, I'm going to talk about the opacity section. So this is where you change blending modes. But first, before we do anything with that, I'm going to bring in a clip, which I'm going to provide a download link for you below. It's part of my VHS pack, so if you guys like these kind of editing tutorials, just know that all these resource packs are I upload regularly, and I have new ones coming out. So if you guys are interested in it, I provide all the resources for to use, as well as teach how to use them in tutorials. So make sure you guys subscribe if you're interested in that, or just learning filmmaking, business, any of that is coming in the future. Let me go into my GIFs folder, and let me go and find my VHS folder, which is right here, VHS overlay pack. And the specific one that I use is called... And the specific one I use is called Glitch in VHS Overlay. So I'm just going to take that and drag it into my library. So make sure you guys go download that in the description below if you guys are interested. So this is what it looks like. I'll just play it out. And what it is, it's just really a black screen with some glitching over it. But what we want to do is we're going to take this. We're going to cut out the part where it says Glitch Overlay. We're going to position this where we'd like, like this. And then I'm just going to scrub over a little bit. And then right here, I'm going to make another cut. Control K click on this and delete it okay so this is the part of the glitching we want so the only thing that's stopping us right now is this is a black screen and we want this to be see-through so that we can see what's underneath which is this so what we're gonna do is click on this clip go up to effect controls and then go over to opacity and then go and then right where it says blend mode just click this drop down and then just make it screen so if you guys are used to Photoshop it's a very similar thing you can change the blending modes in Photoshop also and there's also a lot of different blending modes which you can change and mess around with Okay, so now I'm going to show you another really cool effect. So this is so this is what I refer to as the trippy ghost effect. A lot of people on YouTube will usually tell you just to go to effects and look up the echo effect. Um, so if so, I'm just going to show you real quick what the echo effect looks like. It makes it very bright, and as you can see, it kind of does the same exact thing where it kind of creates that like ghost displacement that you're seeing right there. But there's a lot of things wrong with this that I don't like, and there's a much better way that you guys can do this. So I'm just going to delete this effect. And the way that I do this effect is what I do is I click on my clip. I hold down alt my keyboard and I just drag up and what that is doing is that's creating a duplicated layer you can also you can also just click control C control V to copy and paste it um, if you're on a Mac and you don't know what alt is um, but anyways but anyway so now we have two of this clip and one is on top of the other so all we have to do is just click on the one that's on top go up here to effect controls and then come over here to opacity again and then we're gonna do the same th and then we're gonna do the same exact thing we just did um, with that glitch we're gonna change the blending mode and we're gonna change it to and we're going to change it to screen again. So now what we have to do to complete the effect is actually very easy. All you have to do is just take this clip, just drag it over a little bit so that they're not perfectly in sync, and then make the duration the same. If I play that for you, you're going to see that it creates this crazy ghost effect. Um, this one is like a, 
this one's like a second behind and that's how it's creating that kind of like distortion um, you can also mess around and change how long you want it to be so it's closer or more act so it's more close or more far away it creates this cool trippy like out of focus kind of look I actually have a full video tutorial talking about just how to do this as well as as well as expanding on this effect and showing you guys other things that you can do to add on to this and make it look better check that out it's gonna be in the description it's called trippy ghost effect okay so now we're gonna move on to our very last clip and I'm gonna show you guys how to do our very last effect so this is actually a very very quick little VHS kind of look so a lot of editing they do a lot of like a VHS type look it's very common for editing if you don't have the best camera and you don't have the best quality if you know how to create this look then it doesn't matter it still looks good so what I'm gonna show you guys is under the effects again and we're gonna look up channel blur so I'm gonna take that channel blur effect and drag that onto here um, there's also another way to create this VHS effect look I will link that in the description below but anyways what we're gonna do is just come up here to our effect controls and then under channel blur just open up the just open up the option for blue blurriness and this is going to depend on the clip um, because all different all clips have different lighting um, but usually I put it at about 50 and if you guys can see I'll try and make that full screen there's a blue outline around that so it kind of looks like some RGB displacement so it looks cool I like it and then one more little sub tip just to add on to that effect if you look up noise and then you go down to noise and grain right here drag that onto your clip and then go down change the amount of noise until you get something you like there and this way you can get a nice um, VHS kind of distortion very quick very easy not having to do that arithmetic method which is taught in a lot of other tutorials but anyways guys I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like comment and subscribe I'm bringing you guys daily content of a mix of informational and entertaining stuff for you guys um, whether you're making videos whether you're doing photography all that kind of stuff anyways guys thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later